He's a Hall of Famer who knows more about offensive football than we can pretend to. Michael Irvin joins us here on 95.7 The Game. And oh, Michael, Michael, Michael. The situation that is busted out here in San Francisco is unbelievable. Let's just start with going through where Kyle Shanahan has lost some confidence. To me, he sent the wrong play into the huddle. Why you're asking your quarterback to run RPO when your running backs are doing everything they want in the first quarter of week two, I just I don't understand it. If you got to bust that out in the fourth quarter of a tight game, yeah, okay, that's football. But it felt like an unnecessary play to come in at the time. I know this is a brutal sport. I know guys get hurt. To me, the play was unnecessary. But so much, so much goes into... The, the the grooming, the the, the 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 maturing of a young quarterback, and 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 when I when I saw it, I, I thought the same thing. Man, you ran the ball pretty well. You got to run back, but 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 what you also look what you're also looking for are things to give him confidence, and those are areas that he probably had a little more confidence in than throwing some of the ball. I heard you guys talking also about that deep ball. I just, 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 just real quick to hit that on Trey Lance and on any deep ball, any guy, guys coming from college throwing deep balls, they throw that deep ball a little too flat sometimes because in college you're so used to seeing your guy, if he's a speed guy, run by somebody and really be open. You can be open by a yard or two yards, so you try to throw a more accurate pass than somebody's open by a yard or two yards. In the NFL, that dude is hanging on you like your jersey, and we call that open. So you can't throw that ball as flat. You have to throw that ball with more air up under it and let the receiver spot it in the air and, and find the ball while the DB is watching the receiver. Those are things he can learn. Those are things he will learn. And he needs game, needs game reps learning it. Well, and I guess... Because in, injuries help. And the sad thing for me is now... When they go to Trey next year without Jimmy G, now he has to he has to he has to walk that tightrope without a tether because Jimmy G was there before giving him a little net if he falls or a little tether and and and, and that next year is going to be a little different. Is uh, is there anything that, in your experience, could give you a sense of when? Norm a, a quarter a, a rookie quarterback gets it. Is there sort of a general line of progression about? Eh, it should take six weeks. It should take ten weeks. It should take a full year um, because he's only played three games after only playing a full year of college. So, how far out are we looking at if this is a normal progression for a quarterback? Uh, uh boy. I, I, w- I would love to say one season gets you all the way from kindergarten through to through, through graduation to twelfth grade, but that, that's never really the case. It's so much to learn at this position. It's so much to learn at this position, and those games for Trey was absolutely vital. The games he played, but these games we have left because no matter how much someone talks to you about, no matter how much how much somebody tries to explain it to you. The only way to really get it is to see it. You know, it's only, you can see some things in film, you'll see some things in practice, but game time is really when it really impresses upon you, and losing that game time is critical. There is no, it depends on so many variables, his physical talent, his mental makeup, the way he learns, the way he learns, how he handles setbacks. Some people eat setbacks. Some people get more hungry when they have setbacks, and then, and, and then some people don't don't handle it so well. All of these things are part of the maturing maturing process. And I hope you guys were not uh, thinking that you were going to see Trey Lance go from kindergarten to twelfth grade um, in, in one year. He has a lot of growing to do, and, and it'll be beyond just that one year ago. Well, and that's the devastating thing, Michael, is that. Year one of him being a full-time starter is now pushed back to year three of his rookie contract. And we all know that to have a rookie 
quarterback on a rookie quarterback deal allows you to build a Super Bowl contender around him and spend the money around him. And the timeline for Trey Lance right. now is just so altered from the original you know, version. And the crazy thing is, is that Kyle Shanahan, I think, loses some credibility here because even with success, he can't really claim it. Because there's no one in the world who wanted to get off Jimmy Garoppolo more than Kyle Shanahan. Again, he says all the right things, but his actions were drafting Trey Lance to begin with. Then letting Jimmy onto the open market and saying we're trying to trade him. Then not being able to trade him and then say, all right, Jimmy, Team Garoppolo, Don Yee, you try to trade him. If all you can get us is a bucket of balls, we'll take that at this point. They didn't want this guy on the roster and then they kind of turned around and, you know, hands up. Well, he's still here, and we don't believe in Nate Sudfeld, so we're just going to keep him around because he's going to restructure. Like, it's hard for Kyle Shanahan to look at any of this and claim, this was my plan. This wasn't his plan. It's the opposite of his plan now. Yeah, but, 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 Damon, I, I swear, and, and I'm the right person to be talking to in this situation. I surely wish our coach had a dumb plan like y'all. I wish our coach had a dumb plan. If you're calling Kyle Shanahan plan, dumb, whatever it is, I wish we had a dumb plan. But we had somebody in back of our starter that I felt real good about. I'm glad Cooper Rush got a win, but 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 you know, but but it, it, but this thing happened to have played out perfectly. The plan was to get Trey right, but now something ha- unforeseen has happened. And thank God you got Jimmy Garoppolo. Look at it this way too. The fact that nobody came to get Jimmy Garoppolo, does that not solidify uh does that not solidify Kyle Shanahan's desire to want to come off with Jimmy Garoppolo? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know where the shoulder injury really comes into play there, but I hear you. Uh, I hear you. Hey, hey, wait, 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 D D D D D D Dak Prescott had a broken leg and got forty million dollars a year. Forty million you, you see what I mean? Injured quarterbacks can still get paid if you know that they, they that that injury is going to heal. They knew Garoppolo injury was not going was going to heal, and he still did not get those opportunities. There are a hundred quarterbacks. There are a lot of quarterbacks could have been on the market with an injury, and people would have gone at him. Remember Drew Brees? He had an injury before the Saints signed him. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? But he didn't come with a twenty five million dollar price tag, and that's what Jimmy was looking at at that point. You know, if you wanted Garoppolo, you were absorbing that contract, and I think right. that that's what right. what scared people away. Right, right, right. No doubt, no doubt. But twenty, but but but, but how? How? It's almost like the Amari Cooper thing. The twenty million for Amari is nothing. They got thirty now. That's the market. Twenty five for Jimmy is nothing. They get fifty now. That's the market. You see what I'm saying? That that's what I that, that's what I start going. And the market is going north. Start in next year is going back north again. So so I thought that was. I didn't think that was a bad uh, 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 as worse of a decision as the, uh, uh, as we think. I know you would rather have that 25 to throw back into the kid to put more talent around land, Trey, Trey Lance. But the way this thing has worked out, I mean, you know, unfortunately for Trey and unfortunately for his development and the process he has to go through. But to have Jimmy G right there, you didn't feel the golf that we felt in Dallas when we saw that go down. That was a golf. And you don't want to feel that. So, so I know it didn't plan out probably like he expected to plan out, but the way it happened saves your life, at least this football life for this season. Uh, the, as as for the rest of the game, did you see anything that makes you rethink anything about the 49ers and how they will either succeed or fail this year? Irrespective of the quarterback, do they look like the team that – were awful for the first half of last year and then good later? Or do they look more like the team of three years ago that essentially ran the table? No, that's such a great question. And I'm telling you what's so hard right now to determine is who's what in week two. It's almost like, like I'm, these are, and that's why it's so hard to even call these games or predict who's winning these games because I don't know who's in shape and who's not. You know what I mean? I'm watching guys get winded. And, and, and during the game, it's the second game of the season. You know, before when you were really playing those preseason games, by this time, 
you you had a clear understanding of who is what and how well they'll do it. But right now, you know, I, I can say, friend, there are teams in this league right now still playing with guys that are not all the way in shape, and it's affecting the game. And I see it. I see these guys huffing and puffing, cramping up all that. That's that. That's that's preseason stuff that you get out of the way and get your body ready. But we're still seeing it now. So 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 listen. I believe San Francisco. I, I, I said San Francisco is, is is probably right now as you look through the NFC. You 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 well you have the champs, the Rams, and 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 then you got Tampa, whose defense is playing very good right now. But I, I don't see anybody anybody else that that's just towering over San Francisco right now. Michael Irvin here on ninety five seven. The game. I want to play a soundbite from Kyle Shanahan. From yesterday's press conference for you and then ask you a question about it. Anytime a guy gets hurt, I wish I didn't call that. But no, that's something we were going to do and um, something we would continue to do. That's a, a football play we believe in and something that gives him a chance to be real successful in this league. And he basically goes on to say, you know, a lot of teams play like that. A lot of teams run that play. And it's very common. I'd like to ask you, Michael, how do you feel about calling quarterback power run plays up the middle when a running back is absolutely getting the job done. I mean, the 49ers were moving the ball wherever they wanted when he decided, I'm going to run Trey Lance, hey, diddle, diddle, right up the middle. Do you think Kyle Shanahan deserves any blame in this injury? Well, when, when, like, he's, like, like he said, when you look back, you, you hate to see it happen. He's, man, I shouldn't have done that. I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish we could have done something different. But I, 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 he, you said, you heard, he said also what I talked about earlier. That he was trying to get him some success and get that feeling, a feeling of success, because it makes you yearn and want more success, and it gives you a confidence. You saw, I, he, like, like, like the young quarterback that Miami got yesterday. Tua, Tua. The more success he had, the more confidence he had, the more he's willing. To, I understand what he was trying to do. I'm, I'm like you. He, I rather him do those plays on the outside, and I rather him tell a young Trey Lance, "Get your butt down. This is not college." This is not high school. You're not the best athlete on the field. And everywhere you've ever played, you've been by far the best athlete on the field. Everybody's the best athlete on the field here. I would have liked that. But, but man, I, 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 tell you, I just trust how, how, Kyle, how Kyle runs that situation from the quarterback situation. I, I, I appreciate it when I look at it from the long scope. One more sound. From Kyle Shanahan. Just because, I mean, you guys watch other teams in this league? I and mean, Buffalo does it all the time. Their quarterback's a pretty normal play, part of football, and it's unfortunate that he hurt his ankle on it. But it's, it's a very normal ran play. You guys should watch some other people. So, Michael, what is the difference between Josh Allen? What is the difference in Lamar Jackson and the way that he goes about running? Or are these two guys such individual outliers trying to compare what you might do with your quarterback to how they play with their quarterbacks is totally fool's gold. But everybody wants one of these guys. One of these guys that can do it all now. You know what I mean? And, and, and Trey has that thing. He has that ability to run. He has, yeah, he, you know, he, and, and, and you got to develop him in the passing game. I just watched, I was watching that Tennessee game before we talked. Josh Allen took that ball, went right up the middle of the street, right up the middle of the field, jumped over a guy and got a first down on a crucial third down on a drive that they were going to make a score. I was like, man, I, I you know, I I I rather you doing I rather you do that stuff fourth quarter with game on the line and we got trying to win a division and get a home field advantage. I want you to stay away from that stuff early on. But but sometimes it's such a part of these guys and they're such competitors and and and, and they'll get in the game. They don't even, and you just start going. They start going. I, guys start trying to run people over. I'm like, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Dak Prescott did it last year. I said, man, do that again. I'm going to come through the TV and whoop your butt myself. Don't you do that. You know what I mean? But but they're guys. they got egos. And, 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 and they're trying to show their guys that they're playing all hard and doing everything for them. Listen, Josh Allen and, 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 and Lamar Jackson are two unique talents, man. Unique talent. If you can get that kind of talent, it is an ultimate weapon. A guy that can run and hurt you. That and then throw the ball, hurt you. Lamar Jackson threw a 75-yard touchdown and ran for a 75-yard touchdown. I don't know, it's never been done in the NFL. Yeah, that's amazing if you can get a talent like that. So I understand why 
they're working on Trey because they want that ultimate weapon at quarterback. How do you feel about the report that there were voices in the 49ers locker room who believe they're a better team with Jimmy right now than they were with Trey? Yeah, I believe that. There's no, there's no doubt. There's no, uh, 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 we could understand that. He, Jimmy, Jimmy's had Jimmy's had a tutelage up under up under the greatest quarterback of all time, and then he had all of these years of experience. You know, Trey only had a tutelage under Jimmy, and he had now, and he didn't have all of these years of experience. So right now, I I, I can believe that, but right now isn't the only thing that we're, that that. that that San Francisco, that Kyle Shanahan, and John, John Lynch is trying to secure. They're trying to secure that great candy that I grew up loving. The now and the later. The now and later. The now and later, and that's exactly what Trey Lance gives. Uh, let me break out away from the 49ers for a minute. The number of teams that blew big leads yesterday, is that just sort of an accident or do you see a common thread that suggests that maybe teams aren't either as good at holding big leads or that maybe they're not playing enough and they're prone to blowing big leads? Is this an accident or is this something that we can expect to see some more? You know, them jokers out of shape. They jump out there, they get good, and all of a sudden they get tired. Hey, Tyreek Hill, there was nobody seven yards in front by, by, around Tyreek Hill. When you get Jimmy Johnson, the thing he said, I mean, every day, I still hear it in my sleep. I still hear it when I get up in the morning and brush my teeth. I still hear it when my woman puts the food on the table and I grab the fork to put the food in my mouth. All I hear is fatigue will make a coward of us. Fatigue will make a coward. But we'll be the best shape team. We're going to be in the best condition. Fatigue will make a coward of us. You start making mistakes. You start focusing on how tired you are instead of focusing on your responsibility. Fatigue, fatigue, fatigue. These early comebacks, that's fatigue. You're seeing on a football field because these jokers have walked into the season instead of running into the season and well in good shape. That's what you that's why you're seeing so many of those comebacks. You see mistakes, you see fatigue. As Jimmy said, it makes a coward of us all. Michael 0-2 isn't a death sentence, but it's a very good way to begin your walk to the electric chair. There's some pretty good 0-2 teams out there. The Raiders are now 0-2. The, 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 the Bengals, the defending AFC champions, are 0-2. Do you see an 0-2 team that you still like to be a playoff team? And man, we went over this today on the show, and I was like, wow, this is scary. Because, you know, it's all about expectations when you come to your realization, what expectations did you have before you came to this realization of being 0 and 2? You know, Cincinnati just got out of it, just got to the Super Bowl. It was a Super Bowl. You know, they were expecting to get back there. So I can imagine the drop that they must have. And, and I was thinking about this, you know, oh, you can still get back. We went to a Super Bowl one year and then started 0 and 2. Uh, uh, in 93 after going, after winning the Super Bowl in 92 and we got back to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl. But we had a dude that was coming back that did, uh, missed those first two games. I don't know, y'all might have heard him. He's only the all-time leading rushing name, Emmitt Smith. See, Cincy, you don't have a dude coming back. So now you are sitting in there wrecking your brain like, how the hell are we 0-2 right now? You know what I mean? And this is not what we expected to be right now. So, so that blows my mind. The, the Raiders, the Raiders, that blows my mind that the Raiders are going through that. When you got three number ones, everybody's fighting for one number one. You got a number one out wide, wide receiver, a number one slot receiver, and a number one tight end. Yet you're 0-2. So, yeah, there's some surprises there before. Uh, are there any 2-0 and o teams that, in your mind, shouldn't be or won't last very much longer? Boy, that's a, oh, oh, I say, I'm a full of, uh, uh, my, uh, 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 you know, the only team I would say, oh, it was, that, like, you start talking about teams like, 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 uh, a team like, like a Miami team, some jumping out here, say, oh man, is this real or is this not real? I, I, boy, they're absolutely real. It, it's, it's the style that fits the talent that's on the football field. 
So, so we were asking today: is, is Miami real enough to get Buffalo a chain, a, 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 a chase, and a challenge? And I'm saying absolutely. Now I was watching that Buffalo defense, and and, and they look pretty good. The defense looks pretty good, but it's so explosive. Miami's so explosive, and I think that'll be the biggest surprise when you see what Mike McDaniel is doing with the Dolphins right now. Pretty impressive debut for him, no doubt. A uh, Titans Bills game is underway. We got two Monday nighters tonight, and I'll tell you the winner of the second one, either Vikings or Eagles, is going to be sitting at two and zero and probably pretty well positioned. Uh, Michael, right, right, right. I, I, I want to wrap up with this because Mike Evans, according to the NFL, is going to be suspended for the next game for going out and really getting into a scrap with Marcus Lattimore, but he did it in the name of defending Tom Brady, right. no which problem. means he did it right. I mean, it, there's there's no amount of you even talk to Tom funny and we're coming for your throat that is ever going to be wrong on a football field. Right, right. And and, and and I don't like the NFL spending them for games. I mean, you know, okay, you don't want to see fights on the field, but, you know, Temple's flair. I know Mike came back in the thrall and all of that stuff, man, but I didn't really see, you know, like we ain't seeing any helmets swinging, any crazy stuff. It's just guys pushing guys with all that equipment on. Nobody's going to hurt anybody. It's just blowing off steam. Uh, so, so I hate it. And for Tampa, that's the worst thing in the world. Tampa... You know, hopefully Julio's back because he missed the knee. He didn't play without the knee, and, and Godwin certainly is not going to be back because that hamstring. Uh, I saw Scott and Miller started making some plays. It's just a bad thing for Tampa right now because Mike Evans is such a beast. But I love watching those two. I love watching those two go at it. And each time they go at it, they get in a fight. Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore. They did, it's, it's just one of those great battles, man. And nobody wants to back down. And I and I like that. I like that. I wish the NFL would have recognized that and said, "Hey, we see," and just kind of let it go. And let's watch, let's play some football. Yeah, look, I mean, I like players with squabbles. It's good for the league. It's good for business. Uh, earlier, and this will we'll let you go after this, Michael. And thanks as always. It's great to hear from you. You're calming people down, telling everyone how football team games really work. We appreciate that. Ray asked you earlier how long you needed to get a feel for whether or not a quarterback or really any NFL player is right for the part. I have the same question, but I want to ask about a head coach because Nathaniel Hackett, through two games in Denver, has got an awful lot scored against him right now as far as getting in plays and calling timeouts and knowing how to manage a football game. A lot. Yeah, a lot a lot to go and a lot to learn from that standpoint and we we see some issues for already. But but now even even the game tech the technical game part, that's one thing. He also he's also learning what it is to have that quarterback too now. He's watched many come and go without that quarterback. You know, it's his first time as a head coach. Uh, his first time in those positions to, to, to oversee it all like that, you know, and I, I knew Paul had it. He's my office support data. Uh, to oversee it all like like that. So, so yeah, there's going to be some growing, some, some, gro- some growing problems there, some growing pains there. But, but, but I think what he knows is as long as I just stay tight with this guy Russell Wilson right here and we, we get some wins, I'm going to be okay and I'll have time to learn those things as long as I don't get crossways with the top quarterback. And, and, and he'll, the quarterback's going to be there because they just gave him that deal. And, and, and that means they say you have to get the time to iron that stuff out because he's so tight with Russell Wilson. The and N- Russell's not going to let you fire him. The NFL is officially the best thing on television. It never disappoints. It is it just... It never disappoints. <laughs> it really doesn't. It re- it's the best thing in the world, man. It is the greatest reality show we get to watch every week and, and every day and something comes up every week every day that we can try to grab and we can see a struggle or we can see some glory that we can try to grab and add to our life we see somebody do something great come from nowhere come out of nowhere and do something great and you get inspired you say well he did it i can do it or you can see somebody that goes through something horrific but comes through it and you said, wow, and, and, you know, he, he did it, I can do it. 
That's what makes this so great, dude. That's what makes it so great. That's why we can't stop watching this stuff. It's the greatest thing in the world. It sure is. Michael, thank you so very, very much. And who would have ever thought the Niners are back to Gucci?